Since the end update released in 2016, I've always wanted to transform the main island. Except instead of just placing something on top, I want to remove the island. Creating a giant world tree linking the different dimensions together. Overworld Tree hit 140,000 likes, making it my all time most liked video. Let's try and beat that here with the end tree, so be sure to leave a like on this video. This video has taken over 200 hours and more than a month of my time IRL to create. Partially due to the fact that I'm getting married in two weeks, so I really do appreciate your support on this one, and it helps tell YouTube to suggest my content to more people. As a quick note, to celebrate reaching 2,000 days and 20 episodes in this world, I'm posting a download for YouTube members and Patreon supporters via my Discord. Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome to Hardcore Minecraft. To fully transform the end dimension, I need to kill the dragon 20 times. Each kill will unlock a new end gateway. Now I've already killed the dragon twice. Once for the first time going to the end at the start of this world, and a second time in order to get the advancement for respawning the dragon. With 18 dragons left to fight to summon the gateways, I decided to live stream until I beat them all. Aha, see? Easy. Dragon two is down. There we go. Dragon down. Can't escape me, dragon. Got him. Boop. Only take. Yeah. Going. Mm hmm. Yeah. There we go. The 20th dragon. Oh, it's all done. Oh, it's done. Oh, it's just a, a moment of silence here for the 20th fallen dragon. With the dragons defeated, I took on the scariest monster of all, the Shulker Monster. So far, I've cleared out 18 Shulker boxes from the mess. It's getting there slowly. But from here, I want to take five of them and fill them up with endstone before I blow up the island. Five shulker boxes was a bit of a stretch here, but I've recently loved building with the blocks, so I wanted to make sure I gathered up a bunch to be able to use it later on. But I might as well throw these shulker boxes back into the monster. And add more right back into it, I want to bring nine shulker boxes with me here to save all the obsidian we have to mine after I repair up my pickaxes again. And much better. Now for the fun to begin, tearing down the obsidian pillars. Let's start out with the tiny one. Beacon buff is gone, but we're down to the final layers underneath the island. This is definitely taking a lot longer than I wanted to being below the beacon. We're gonna have to move that down. Well, it's a good thing I dug out this giant pit because I think that'll be perfect. Let's move this down there. And all ready to go. Back to the void. Excuse me, I need this pillar, good sir. Goodbye, I'm sorry. Down to the final layer now, but unfortunately the beacon buff doesn't reach. It reaches to here. The first pillar is now done. Don't fall into the void. And nearly a full shulker of obsidian. With this, the second pillar is now done. And still scary, but we've got progress. Next up, because this hurts my brain so much, the big pillar is off being centered by one block. It's also going to be the most painful to destroy. So let's get to work on this. I continued on mining obsidian, watching Star Wars, and just vibing out in the end dimension until my pickaxe was near the breaking point. Going back to the overworld every time to repair my pickaxe, outside of dropping off all the obsidian, takes way too much time. I think it's finally time for an actual experience farm in this world. The staple of any Minecraft world, an Ender Ender. It's a little scary being on the one block here, so let's get a little bit of a bigger platform. First, I started by placing some frog lights down as a base platform. Then adding a deep slate trim around the edge, I started stacking up carpet to prevent the Enderman from teleporting. Then time to set up the killing area with some hoppers and finishing off the base platform. Then adding in the drop shoot rings and spawning platform at the top. From here, I need a load of ender pearls so that I can spawn an ender mite. So come on over, my friends. Hello, everybody. I need, your, I need ender pearls, please. 
That should hopefully do it. From here, we need to trap an Endermite sitting in a minecart on top of this. Right, let's give this a shot. Oh, there we go. Yes. Now you just need to go all the way over here. And he's in. You can hang out there forever, buddy. One final step. I want to get rid of this cobblestone and get rid of the leaves. With everything being double carpet down here, we should be safe to smack. And repair up the pickaxe. Oh, this is good. And there we go. Fully repaired. And I only have eight rockets, so I should get more before I get stranded. Back to tearing down the pillars. Finishing off day one of this project by removing the largest pillar of obsidian. Three pillars down. Seven more to go. But at least now the largest is done. With that, I continued to remove the pillars around the circle in hopes of reaching the halfway point on the obsidian miner. And now the fourth pillar is done. One more and we can start the TNT. I think I can make that happen by the end of day today. Halfway through the fifth and we have five more shulkers of obsidian. I just need to fill these up two more times. But at least I can drop them off for now. And back to the end we go. Finally, the fifth pillar is now done as well. Just three hours later. Next, we can use some of the obsidian to cover the exit portal. Well, minus one spot. As next up, I want to assemble Raysworks TNT Perimeter Maker, where I need a little bit of slime. And finally, a few dead coral fans. Right, this should be everything right here with needing to craft these up into some slime blocks. But I don't have a crafting table. All this end dimension, but no end to my pain. Slime blocks are now crafted, but the trip back made me real. I need to also break the bedrock at the top of the obsidian pillars. At least the lower ones for now. This was a flashback I really wasn't hoping to have today. All right, first one. And done. We're all done with the destroyed pillars. Since the TNT machine is going to take hours to cover the entire island, I'm going to build it now before I break the rest of it. Assembling the TNT machine itself was terrifying, working over the void with buggy explosives, but it's now done. Removing this redstone block should activate it. Yep. Yep, it did. Look at all that TNT. Looks like it is working here. So I'm going to go touch some grass for a few hours and just let it run. I'm having one of those moments, though, where I think I just made a terrible, terrible mistake. That TNT is going to hit these and just bounce right back up. <laughs> I'm in danger. Oh, well, let's let it ride. And it broke. The machine is now rebuilt five blocks higher. So hopefully this works. With that working and grass touching completed, I went back into my deep obsidian pit of despair and continued destroying the pillars, hoping to move quick enough to stay ahead of the machine itself. Two more pillars destroyed. The machine kept working the entire time, blowing up the end island while I took a much needed break. Looks like the machine missed a little island over here. So I want to blow it up myself for fun. So fun. Ooh, explosives. Yay. And it didn't get it all. You saw nothing with the machine stopped. I would like to repair my pickaxes one more time before we get to the final three pillars. Next, I do need to get rid of my safety tub. And pillar number seven is a go. Finally, number eight is now gone as well with this final obsidian. And we go, two more. One very dead pickaxe, but number nine is now done. I never started the TNT machine. Let's empty the obsidian shulker boxes and repair the pickaxe. Obsidian is dropped back off in the overworld and it's time to finish this off once and for all. Portal is sealed up so no TNT can escape. It's time to chop this boy down. With the 10th pillar going down, I completed the final two and a half hours of obsidian mining. It's all done. Just 45,663 obsidian mined in total. That is... Wow, that's a lot of obsidian. Now I just need to remove the remaining half of the main and island. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I should save the beacon. I don't have an extra. That is terrifying sounding down here. I want out right now. I try not to AFK in this world as I don't want to inflate the day count 
but there was no work to be done on this project until the island disappeared so i spent over seven hours afk waiting for the machine to blow up the island and it's now complete nearly all of the end stone is now gone i just need to break the last few blocks over the void which is easier said than done trying to land on them okay Woo. oh i'm gonna hate this we get it without landing no no we cannot no we cannot just the two spots the machine could not get to but now every enderman and their mom are gonna be hanging out maybe we get rid of them oh i made them mad there we go oh now they're really mad oh no another one there we go you may be tall but high up the high ground Oh, Enderkin, we meet again. Uh, he got a beer. He also has the high ground. No, no. The central bit is now gone. And I'm going to leave a little three by three of frog lights here. Just in case I want to build down, I've got a lot easier access. Now for the last bit under the entry obsidian. We've been through this before. Next, to make sure it's safe when we enter the end for now, this should hopefully stop mobs from spawning on the entry obsidian. Because I need it. Oh, God. This is actually really scary to fly around in, just in an endless void. But it's time to go find some blocks to build with. Now that I've been removing blocks for three weeks, I want to build some things. Let's start with some frog lights for the framework of some pathways. And we are loaded. The goal is to build a giant tree floating in the void surrounding the exit portal using the frog lights i want to make the bottom of the roots glow making this place more magical first frog branch is in and i totally think this can work out purposely connecting in a little bit lower here so that's not at the absolute base of the tree i think it's time to tackle the root of the problem here and get place in all these frog lights it feels great putting in the first blocks on the build finally moving this forwards after so long the roots are stretching out far into the circle of the end gateways next i'm guessing i'm gonna need a lot of glass for this build and that's no sand well i guess it's off to the desert for me hello mining desert my old friend i'm back for more sand just six shulker boxes this time Six shulker boxes full of sand. I'm going to add two of them into the super smelter for now. Now this nearly 2000 day hardcore world is going to come together. As most of the items I need for this build, I have farms for like bone meal from the moss farm to the swamp, drop off the bone meal and get some light blue dye, which we can use for light blue glass. Next up the guardian farm first for prismarine and prismarine bricks. And I really thought I had a shulker box of dark prismarine in here. That could be a problem, as I don't have a source of black dye yet. We'll see how far this takes us. I know I want to create a foggy glass floor effect here in the center of the tree using our light blue glass. From here, I've got no idea what I want to do at the center. So let's focus on the entry point. First, I traded with the stonemason villagers to unlock their trades to be able to trade for some quartz. Then running into the mines to gather cobbled deep slate. And now for the fun game of waiting for copper to age. For my birthday, we have some nice oxidized copper to gather up except you you know what nearly two stacks that should be enough back in the end now and i want to create a safe platform for when we spawn in starting off with a circle frog lights behind it and another ring of deep slate on the top i can't build anything on top of the obsidian because anytime you come into the end it would all break so instead, I'm going to be building up and creating a dome over the entire platform. Things are looking good now, but I've got to link this up to the center, where I think I want to use Prismarine for some pathways. The pathway now goes all the way from spawn to the exit portal, kind of. 
I've decided I want to use Wartwood in this build, but I'm a little worried that I don't have much. Oh, really none at all. Okay. I'm thinking a double staircase going around there and here with some stripped warp log pillars and some warp slabs and stairs to get us up. First side is now done. Just need to repeat that over here, which is now done as well. And I want to add in these little amethyst patches here at the back with a walkway to like a viewing platform into the void and using some white concrete we can build a rail with some light blue stained glass and crimson trapdoors on top i've already run out of warp wood so it didn't get me that far but i'm thinking some waxed copper around here could be really cool i just need a lot more warp wood if we want to build the tree out of it first i pick acacia and then i pick warped wood why back into the nether i go to destroy an entire warp forest got him run two Woo, I'm too good. But here we are, the warped forest. But now that we got all of the warped items gathered up over here, we got a ton of them. I really want to get the ink sorted, so we need a squid farm. First off, we're going to need to take some oak logs and craft a ton of oak fence gates, which this might be able to get us started. ASMR sponge drying. And now we squid farm. Now with the hole cleared out, we need to come in here and create giant platforms for squids to spawn. Now with all of the fences in, I just need to fill the entire thing with water. Then if we open all the fence gates, ah, fell through, I didn't want to fall. I should have done that side first. Probably should have done that side first. Opening the last two fence gates here and the farm is done. Now I just need to keep draining the river going all the way back. Final step here is gonna be adding in an entire layer of glass above the rails. The squid farm is done! No! Ah. Now I can take all of this ink, which there's plenty, turn it into black dye, and craft dark prismarine. With a gradient going from dark prismarine to warp planks to warp warp block to moss block, it's time to build the first root of the tree. I've been gathering and prepping for so long that I forgot to hit record, and I just got building, so enjoy the time lapse that I thankfully had left running in order to complete the entire main stretch of route from the entry platform to the exit portal. Starting from a void of nothingness on this build, it feels great to have the first section built out so I can now safely walk around again in the the end. Placing the base of the roots here near the frog lights seems to be my best bet to get this done safely. So it's time to place all of the perimeters in. First half is now done. Just over to the second side. The best part about these bridges is that the frog lights underneath actually stop any endermen from spawning which is going to help a lot. But all of the outlines are now complete. I just need to finish putting the roots on the top of the frog lights. One final time, I grabbed all the blocks I could need and set for spending another two hours finishing off the roots. Finally, over 10 hours later, the roots are finished. I'm now on day 1,971. I started this project on 1,000... 764 with a full central end island obsidian pillars and so many dragons to kill finally the base of the tree is complete but we're only just getting started and we can only go up from here get it because we're building a tree up Okay, I'll get to work. But first, we have something extremely important to do. In every hardcore episode, I build a new field to keep growing the farmland around the capital city, slowly consuming everything with farmland until it blots out the grass with the wheat. Wheat as far as the eye can see. So you'll subscribe to see it happen if you haven't already, right? I'm already 200 days in this video. Please sub. Okay, thanks. awesome blue sky planted a field life is good time to have my soul crushed as i stare into the black void that is the end wait i don't have one. Oh no 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 i already made that joke i already made that joke when building the last tree can't do it again keeping the same build palette i'm able to jump into the next section really easily 
And I think a good height for the trunk is to be coming all the way up here. However, I want the tree to look like it's made of light. So I want to bring in a bunch more frog lights throughout here. It's almost like scars going up the tree. First one is now done. Second should be done too. There goes the third winding around the back. From here, I want to focus on the front. So I created a flatter section on the tree to be able to build a better doorway to get inside. Using a similar dome to the landing platform, I want to create an arch out of quartz, adding in the typical deep slate trim. On top, however, I want to contrast against all the cyan and prismarines. So prismarine brick won't work, but copper, waxed copper will. Adding in some acacia and orange terracotta with some glow lichen around the edge can really make this pop. And for the first time ever, I'm using honeycomb blocks right along here with some crimson trapdoors on top. That is a much more proper front entrance. From here, I want to grab calcite. And to make the inside of the tree look really clean, we can pile up a bunch of this, which is looking pretty good from the inside. And I'll have to figure out something fun to do with all the frog lights. And now it's very easy to tell where the entrance is. Let's do this on the backside as well with the little balcony. And I want to rip a similar idea on the back, incorporating some of the ochre frog lights, then another dome on top. Instead of honeycomb, we'll just use some glass like we did in here. Now I have a second location to look into the endless void. Such a great view. Wow. Let's at least make our home in the endless void of life. I mean, the end dimension look good. So I continued stacking up blocks on the tree trunk itself around the different frog scars I created earlier. One more chunk of the tree left to fill in and another massive section of the tree will be done. Not to get sappy over this tree, but seeing the project take shape has been a fan fantastic experience throughout this episode. One more thing I would like to try. But what I want to try is adding foggy glass around the froggy scar as they will stand out a little bit. First one is done, and I like that a lot. Okay, let's do it on the other two. Those three are now in, and it is looking pretty impressive. Definitely didn't miss one. Nope, not at all. Time to put the glass aside and pick up a bunch of blocks and build out the branches of the tree. Oh snap, I did what I said I was gonna do. What a relief. This build is starting to look absolutely nuts as all of the branches are sticking out. And I think I did a lot better job on the ratio this time compared to the first Giga Tree build. Oh wow, somehow I forgot about all these guys. Uh, okay, I'm gonna need a new plan to get rid of them. And quickly, staring contest, staring contest, ah! I will win this one. Okay, maybe this is going up for a long time. Goodbye. To spawn proof the top of the tree and really make the floating lore tree impressive, I want to use end rods instead of leaves, which I have tested to make sure it works. And I need 34,000 end rods, meaning five shulker boxes of blaze rods. Ah, I got 64. And five shulker boxes of popped Horus fruit. Thankfully, a long time ago here in the nether, I can run around a nether fortress and kill blazes for hours. Like this guy. Give me a skull. Give me a skull. This time for sure. But no, I built a blaze farm. So now I put on a movie and I kill blazes for a long time. From here, I grabbed a carved pumpkin from the overworld and dove into the end gateway to get to the outer islands, gathering as many coarse flowers as I could and leaving a bleak landscape behind me. So I've been working on this all morning and I just realized now, um, I didn't get any audio. This is how I feel right now. This carved pumpkin face, that that's how I feel right now. But good news is one shulker box of coarse fruit, two shulker box of coarse fruit, and the third, is almost done too. And we got plenty of flowers. And now with the power of game audio, we break everything. The easy part is now over. I have five sugar boxes of popped chorus fruit and five sugar boxes of blaze rods. Now I'm just really hoping this is actually enough materials to craft all of the end rods. Putting the pumpkin back on and crafting end rods for the first time. I got started placing end rods onto the tree using light matica to make it easier to place them as anytime I've worked with end rods or glass panes resorts in massive amounts of pain. I'm already 300 days into this project now with over 54 hours of time in game building the tree. So I think it's okay to make it go a tiny bit faster. Even with light matica, I've still never regretted a build decision so much in my life. I repaired my elytra when starting this. It's halfway broken because I keep falling through. In order to move around up here, I have to jump between every single one of these blocks. Looks like it is working to keep the enderman off the trees though. So that is fantastic. Oh, we're gonna have a mob proof end. 
Ah, hitting everything. Lots of progress is being made on the tree, and it looks so good. But my elytra is about to break. And much better. Back to placing end rods. Placing in 30,000 of any block takes ages, but doing that with end rods where you can fall in between the cracks between every single block makes it take so much more time to do. But I've stuck with it and I'm becoming an end rod parkour professional in the process. Crafting up some final rounds of end rods right over here and check this out. We are almost through everything. All of these shulkers are empty and we are now reaching the upper branches of the tree. This is it. The final end rod placements are going in for the tree to be complete. I really never thought I would get to this point. 34,000 end rods, all to create this absolutely insane mega tree inside of the end. Currently on day 2040, we started from the base end island, destroyed the entire thing, took down all of the obsidian pillars, and we finally have made it to the end with an entire tree floating here in the void with over 34,000 end rods placed up above to create the leaves on the tree. One part of this remains before we can call this entire project completed. The inside of the tree does not look all that great. Time to grab some calcite and cover the frog lights on the inside with light blue glass as well. One day this project will come to an end, but today is not that day. The last of the calcite is now going in around the entire interior of the trunk, and it is looking very clean in here. I put some moss at the top to kind of block it off, so we don't need to go all the way up there. No, 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 no. We're going to cut corners. Walls are now in place, and I want to grab some copper, a little bit of bee. Of course, I only have three, but there should be plenty at the bee farm. As well, on top of this one, it is finally time to give the dragon egg a home. First, I want to complete the railing around here on the base, and to break up all the white, let's just fill in moss back here and a few of the roots on top. Could be better, but it'll do for now. And ignore everything down in the fog. You can't see it, the fog is so thick. But what I could do is trap doors around the edge, which actually helped a lot. Next for the dragon egg itself, we've got the copper down and going up a few blocks here. I wanna create some archways going all the way around. And then from here, taking a few of our warp trap doors, Wow, 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 wow. Okay, it's not safe to fly in here. We can step all the trapdoors up like this to make them float. And then I think in here in the center, we can add some frog lights. And I really like how much this contrasts against everything else in the center. But now we take the end rod and finally, 2000 days later, return the dragon egg to the end. Just a little bit of a different environment now. The sugar box monster has been cleaned up and it is looking so good in here. But there's one more element we still need to do. The last item on the cleaning list, I need to remove the TNT machine and try and save as many as I can. And there we have it, it is completely gone. There it is, the entry. Remember, there will be a world download available to YouTube members and Patreon supporters. So join the Discord after pledging to get the download if you wanna check out this world in game for yourself. I am getting married in about two weeks after this video goes live, and I'm super excited to say that this thing is done. I was getting a little worried there. When I return from my honeymoon, I hope to upload the hardcore series much more regularly. And we're going back to our roots in this hardcore world. Back to the starter house to start construction on a massive medieval fantasy city rolling down the hills. Please be sure to leave a like on this video as I've literally been working on it for over a month IRL. Let's beat 140,000 likes to surpass the overworld tree. And please subscribe, but I'll catch y'all on the flip side.